you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. After a year, I still haven't uh, figured out a makeshift flag. I should really get on that. <laughs> I have a Chelsea flag right in front of me where I sit, so I just uh, say the pledge to that. <laughs> <laughs> I pledge allegiance to my team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, public comment? Anything? Nothing. Nothing. All right. We'll check in with them again later. See if they have something to bring up. Let's speak at once. There's plenty of time. That's right. <laughs> um, all right. Oops. That's not what I want to do. Um, so maybe we thought we could start off with an update on how things are going with uh, senior staff and their planning. Right. So my time management is poor, or maybe I just don't have time, one or the other. Um, <laughs> I did send out to you guys, um, I put together a presentation uh, that I put together the night before the last senior staff meeting. Um, I know we had, I had said I would try to get one in before that senior staff meeting, but I just couldn't do it. So uh, I made sure I got it for the staff meeting and then I tried to give the staff the option if that day wasn't good, I would offer it another time, but everybody hung out. So uh, we did the regular meeting. And then at the end, I kind of went through um, the uh, strategic planning slide deck that I put together, as well as the one that uh, we delivered to the selectmen discussing our process and Agile and how we're going to do it. Um, there were some good questions. Um, uh, I thought it went pretty well. People, it seemed to, I don't know, nobody pushed back, which I'll, I'll chalk up as a win. Um, and then uh, Rob Dyer uh, reached out to me afterwards and just said, like, if we want to use him as a guinea pig, he's happy to... Uh, sit down and lead the way. Okay. So that's great. I was trying to think of how will be the easiest way to roll this out for people. Um, so I, I don't know if you guys looked at the slide deck that I put together, but I started from, from the basics and said like how you know, this is the process. I laid out the steps that, that we followed for the town as a whole. Many of you remember speaking to us as part of that process. Um, and then I kind of said, you know, for each of you, you should really be conducting that pro process for your own departments. And mm -hmm. there eventually. Um, but I wanted them to think about starting, um, starting with the mandates for each of their departments. Um, you know, what do statutes task them with? What do ordinances and the charter task them with? What are the other parts that aren't codified anywhere in terms of like good uh, customer service? And, you know, what do the residents actually expect of us? Are we delivering the services that we're supposed to kind of deal? Um, so I was trying to think of how we can kind of phase this in for them and, you know, looking for feedback from you guys. I was wondering if maybe the best thing to do is to kind of task them all, give them homework like we've done on this committee and just say like, for next meeting, I want you all to come back with a list of mandates and that's where we're going to start. And then, you know, a list of stakeholders and then you know, just kind of build it up that way. If you think that's too slow, I don't know what you guys think. I personally think tasking people 
make makes it easier, you know, rather than just saying, hey, think about this and work on it. Because I, like we've said before, I can think about something till the end of days. Um, but by giving a specific deliverable and a specific deadline, I think, you know, people, they're either going to do it or they're not. And I think as long as we keep it, as you make it not cumbersome and, and not something that's going to say, oh, well, I couldn't do my regular task because I was spending so much time working on whatever this is, then that can be a good way to go. And the rest of the team, what do you guys think? Fantastic. Yeah, makes sense. My only, and again, I don't want to say concern, but the thing to think through is when they put together a strategic plan, I, I, I wouldn't want them to think that they're on their own having to develop it. Like they, they would want to come together with their team and, and get a core uh, grouping of things they want to work on versus, you know, the manager coming up with that. Cause that, that kind of defeats the purpose. You want everybody's buy-in. So you want everybody to help develop the, that plan. So the only thing I would caution or just make sure they understand that it's not on them just to come up with a bunch of tasks and bring it back to you, Rory. It's really yep. their ability to work with their team to come up with something the whole team's going to buy in on, you know, that's the only thing I've, and as long as that's clear, then that should be fine. Yeah. I, I talked to them about, I had a, a note in there about, you know, strategic plan champions, right? Like you guys, you don't have a choice. You are the champions for each of your departments as, as the leaders. That's how we're doing it for now anyway. Like maybe some natural champions will, you know, stand right. at various points. But for now, you guys will be driving this for your department. So, um, you know, it's also, again, it will be different department to department, right? The senior staff, is, is not a homogenous group, right? Like Tony DePrimo in Public Works um, and, and Paul Sikowski in the police department, right? Are our biggest departments. Um, they have the most to gain from this probably. Um, they, I don't know if Public Works does like staff meetings kind of thing. I, I honestly don't and I know what they will do at the police department is at shift change sometimes they'll do quick meetings so they can get you know two thirds of, of the, the staff who are reporting on any given day. Um, so I'm wondering if it's easier to kind of ease them into it and just have the leadership because start there and say like, you know, you should be soliciting feedback from your departments. You know, you're everybody who works with you um, has a role and should have a say in this as well. But um, to kind of ease them into it until they get to a point, you know, I don't, I don't know how you feel about that. But I agree, I, I, I agree. Um, but tactfully, they have to take into consideration whoever's putting that together, they're gonna have to take into consideration things that are just not managerial things, you know, things that their teams need or will buy into. Cause that's our, so that's some of the, that's get some of the buy-in. It's things that they want and they can recognize that if it's in the plan, it can get action and done. So I think that's an important piece. <clears throat> well, and, and to start anyway, what I was thinking and, and really I wanna send them an email, you know, this week after this meeting, I was waiting to talk to you guys um, with their task and say, have this for the next meeting. You know, if, if it's a list of, I was thinking, honestly, give me a list of your stakeholders. Just tell me who you think your stakeholders are and tell me who, tell me what you think your mandates are. And that's where we'll start. Who do you think you need to, you know, consider during this process? And what do you think your role is in the town? And we'll start there. And, and that's a discussion point. And then Maybe. I I'm sorry, go ahead, Kathy. No, I was gonna say, and you could maybe even have them do blue sky a couple of tasks just to kind of 
see if they understand the concept of you know what we're looking for. Um, you know I'm goals. Blue sky. Um, we're not looking for correctness necessarily. We're looking to see if they understand the concept. Okay. So like blue skying is kind of like um, just taking us. Hang on, it might be me. Just taking a stab at it. Do you have a slide deck prepared for blue sky? Hold on. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I could do one if you want. <laughs> no, a blue sky is just kind of taking a stab at it. It's just kind of what do you think? You know. Well, so and you know this population though better than. Some of them, you know, expressed concern about like, I don't know how long it took me to go through the slides, but you know, at least a half hour. So it was a lot of information and we've talked about some of mm -hmm. it. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, in the, I talked to a couple of them called me after, after we did finish the call and I just, you know, said to them, I don't expect everybody to get this immediately, you know, we, we didn't get this immediately, right? It, it took us some time to, to put stuff together and then, you know, to really refine it, it's gonna take some work and we're not gonna get, you know, A plus work from everybody right off the bat and that's to be expected. So um, yeah, I mean, that, that's really what I'm talking about. And we, if, if I have assigned that task to them, I can set up a quick call with them and, and go over it and just say like, well, you know, I noticed on your stakeholder list that you didn't include the residents. You didn't include, you know, okay. your board. And, and then I can kind of workshop it with them a little bit. Rory, would it help? I mean, and, and this is where this board can maybe help. Would it help if they saw it from someone else? Like, it, 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 you know, if any one of the department staff worked with like either Stefan or, or Kathy or myself or, or Donald to, to put together the plan and it's coming from someone else, does that help? Or no? You know, I personally, right, when, when I'm tasked with something, I try to look up an example just to get a touch point. Right, you know, oh, okay, so this is what that plan might look like. Um, and I can look up, I'm sure, you know, for police departments, I'm sure I can find strategic plans out there. I'm sure I can find, you know, highway department strategic plans, that kind of thing. And so that, that might ground it for them. You know, I think when, when we get into, you know, based on the process that I laid out for them, when they get to the point of identifying strategic issues, I think that's where it's really going to get difficult um, because that gets pretty abstract and conceptual. And I think that's where it's going to, that's where we'll hit a stumbling block. Yeah, like I've said before, it's okay to miss. I mean, it's, it's just really to get the vision down on paper so it can get clearly, you know, accepted across multiple people at the end of the day. I mean, that's really what you're trying to achieve. Uh, yeah, you have to report on it. Yeah, you have to, but if you miss, you miss. Mm -hmm. it, you show progress towards it. So I don't know. It, I don't know if it's worth, if you have someone who's struggling, you know, like I said, I would, oh, I would show them what I did. I, I could explain to them very quickly how I put together my plan and then talk about things they should think about for their plan and at least get them kick-started. I don't have to help them do it, but I can get them thinking about this is how you might generate a plan. You know? I mean, I, I absolutely think it's helpful. And, and, you know, that's why Rob's suggestion that, you know, he can be kind of the guinea pig and we can rush him through it because I, I feel very comfortable that he'll have no problem with it. But, you know, Absolutely, Bob. If, if we can set up a time and just kind of show everybody what we're talking about, I think that would be very helpful. And it could be individual to the person in the apartment. So it's not, you know, the other thing too is maybe they don't want to feel that way across everybody, but 
you put them in a room with somebody who's done it before, and they, you can just talk to them for a half hour. It might give them just enough that they need, you know, or an hour. Yeah, really. I think that is an important point where we've gotten them comfortable with staff meetings because those, and maybe they existed at some point in town, but um, still relatively recent. We've only been doing them for three or four years, you know? And I think they're comfortable sharing at that level, but it, you know, kind of the, the vulnerability required to be learning something in, in a group of your peers, that might be a challenge for some of them. Oh, absolutely. That's why I'm saying, so that's why you, you, you do it at a kind of individual basis. And it, and it could be just kind of, hey, if you're stuck, you know, Stefan will come in or Bob will come in and, and they could they could sit down with you and show you what the, how they've generated a plan and then help you get kickstarted, you know? Yeah. Agree with that. That's sort of the same. That's how I've, that's how I've envisioned our uh, continuing contribution to the plan um, with the teams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys coming in in kind of a consulting role when they hit roadblocks. I mean, and, and, and even to get them kickstarted, because that's the hardest part. Well, listen, once you start going, it just flows. It's getting okay. kickstarted and getting that stuff down on paper is the hardest thing. I, I guess that's, that's what I'm asking is, you know, because the staff meetings only happen once a month. You know, I can assign, and, and again, for some of them, it's going to be more difficult than others. Obviously, Tony DePrimo's had a hell of a month <laughs> in February, you know. Um, so I, I don't want to make it too small, but I also want to make it manageable. So, um, and I also don't want to just say, cool, I gave you the slide deck. Now create a plan for me. Yeah, See, see, let me see the finished plan. <laughs> exactly. So I, that's why I'm thinking about piecemealing it, you know. But I just want to make sure that that, you know, if I assign them, so we're, you know, one week into the senior staff month, right, um, from our last meeting, and I just assign them, you know, mandates and stakeholders, and then I meet with them before the next meeting individually so that we don't mm -hmm. have the, um, you know, we can get around the, the group dynamics issues. Um, maybe then we can talk about it as a group. Rory, do you, have, you currently have things that they're measured on today, correct? Some, some not all. Okay, so there are guys that they're measured on something. You know, you, you could start there as a, as a KPM, key performance measure, that you're measured on this already. How do you action that? How do you, how do you meet that goal? And let them work through, so you work backwards and, and then you can show them, well, those are the tasks that are part of the plan. And, and can you do anything better? If you wanna blow that number out of the water, what would you do? I would do this. Okay, well then add that. So you could back it in so you're using the measurements that they already have, because then they'll start thinking, well, I'm measured on this, but I'd like to be measured on this. I think this is important. Great, that's a key performance measure. Let's get some actions around how you get there. So you're working kind of backwards. Yeah, we had some some rough data points, some more than others. Tony DePrimo generates a ton of data and sends out yeah. spreadsheets unsolicited, right? Um, like the police department. I'm thinking back to the, to the quarterly reports and what people would turn in. Um, the, the police departments was pretty narrative driven. Their, their quarterly report, it was less about arrests. And, and I don't know that that's data that we would want to measure the police department by anyway, right? <laughs> We're short for arrest this month. Let's go find somebody. Go out and find some hooligans, you know? <laughs> and then, you know, so, some of them, obviously right now, uh, we had like attendance and program data for community services and library. That's challenging right now. Uh, well, like the, you bring up the police department, you might say, you know, I, I, with all the things that are going on, I think there should be some type of education training, uh, empathy training for police that 
all police should be going through. I'm just using that as an example. Are we doing that? And if we are, how many guys are getting done within a year? That's a con that's a very statistical. I got an action and a task, right? Yeah. I mean, you could, and it, you're right. You don't want to get. You don't want to go upon the arrest, but there are other things that are components to the arrest that are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Can I, can I just jump in with a question? And this is gonna sound really dumb and I was gonna actually ask this of Anne-Marie because it may be a mindset that she is seeing differently than Kurt did. How much of the, of the, the goal, the, the performance measures <coughs> are driven by the board of selectmen? How do they, what is the intersection between the board of selectmen and the, town departments. Rory. <laughs> so, but I, I, I mean, I understand that, you know, tactically, but so does the Board of Selectmen look at the departments and go, you know what, we'd really like to see A, B, C, or D? So uh, what we did, and again, the, the charter provides for it, but I don't know that it was done for a long time. But what we started doing is once a month, you know, Board of Selectmen meet twice. But at one of those meetings, we try to bring in usually a member of the senior staff to come and do just kind of a, a state of the department general update and give the selectmen, um, you know, an opportunity to ask questions. Um, that would be the probably the limit of the extent of direct interaction between the, the board and members of the senior staff. And, and that usually is only members of the, of the senior staff. Right. So then who at the end of the day decides, so is, is it literally up to the senior staff member what their priorities are? Because I mean, what I'm getting at is, yeah, on a day-to-day -day basis, my my boss tells me, you know, lets me figure out how I'm going to achieve whatever my goals are. But at the end of the day, he's got there's this bigger picture that I have to answer to, and he's so I'm trying to figure out who who holds that big picture and says, look at this. Well, In my mind, it should be the board of selectmen. That's the first selectmen, because so so you think about the town. You have a mission vision, you have all those things in a PL that you have to maintain for the town. That mm -hmm. would be at a person at Leckman level, and then that should flow down to the departments that are a function of the town. So, yeah, you know, really the missing component here is the quarterly reporting. Mm -hmm. Because that answered most of the questions that you guys are asking right now. What, what were the, the things that we collected data and measured on? That was based in the quarterly reporting. It was, for the most part, an exercise in futility at the time. Um, department heads were given very wide latitude um, and essentially freed to run themselves. There was not a lot of goal setting. Um, and so that's, that's on the list of things that like we need to bring back, but we don't want to just resurrect it as it was because it wasn't providing us a lot of useful information. So um, maybe I just need to move that up my priority list. But in, you know, in terms of Goal setting was was the part that was really missing, um, and that's challenging, I think, for a lot of people. Um, but if it's the directive coming from the top, then again, even if we don't get it right the first time, we'll get some practice. So I, I'll, I'll move revamping quarterly reporting up to the top of my list and um, 
if I'm giving the senior staff homework, I guess it's only fair to give myself some. Rory, was Paul um, a part of the discussion about strategic planning? Yes. Okay. So if I reached out to him and talked to him about it, he'd, he'd be fine with that? They, they all, uh, Tony DePrimo asked that I send out the slide deck at the end. So they have both slide decks. They, you know, Paul's in the senior staff meeting. So he's been a part of most, if not all of the discussions that we've had about it. So it should not be uh, brand new to him. When is the next senior staff meeting, Rory? What's the date and time? We actually just changed it. Um, it is. It used to be the second Monday. Now it is the second Tuesday of each month at uh, 10 a.m. So your next one will be in March, March something. Okay. Yeah, then I. Yeah. March 9th. You know, because what I would like to do, we we were generating data. We, mm -hmm. we said, give us any numbers you can give us. And some of those were more helpful than others. Um, but we really struggled with some departments to identify data that actually represented a performance measure. But I, you know, that's the hard work that has to get done. Because, you know, for example, average daily attendance at the library, circulation numbers. Um, if we're not seeing any change in those, we're not growing the user base. So maybe then one of the strategies is, you know, get more get more library cards into the hands of Seymour residents, you know. And how can we do that? And um, I'll have to think about that. But I'm gonna have to work with uh, each department. Okay, I'm putting that. I'm gonna put that senior staff meeting on my calendar for March 9th. Um, right now, I, my calendar's open at work, so that you know I can, even if it's just to be a fly on the wall. Um, I can, I can also, you know, because you guys are working, um, I don't usually, I, and I'm sure nobody would even notice, I can record the senior staff meeting. Mm. Uh, I, I won't, I'll try not to post it on YouTube, uh, but I can, I can share a link with you guys. That could be helpful. I mean, it might give us some insight into you know, reactions, questions, you know, kind of the vibe. I almost recorded the presentation. I, the thought crossed my mind and I wish I had now so that you guys could see it. Okay. You know, there's gonna be the, the normal portion, which is just everybody go around the table, say what you're doing. And then we find out kind of the intersectionality in these projects and, and who needs to be paying attention and what questions they may have. Um, which is important, but may, is not as important as uh, the strategic planning aspect, you know? Um, but I will, I, I think I can do that. I'll just let them know that I'm gonna record it so that you guys can, can you know, take a look at it if you're not able to be there. Okay. Does, does it make sense to maybe talk to one of the smaller departments? And I don't know who, you know, the tax collector, they, they are, you know, is that a slow time, but to talk with one of them kind of before the meeting and, you know, draw a little bit out of them to say, okay, here's, and then you can, or I guess you said you have Rob to kind of use that as a past example. Yeah, you know, the, so the clerk, uh, tax collector, assessor, those four, the, the smaller ones, do not do the senior staff meetings. Okay. Oh, uh, that is Tony. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so, you know, it's Jim Baldwin overseeing land use, right? Um, Tony Caserta, operations, Tony DePrimo, public works. 
Paul Sikowski, police, um, Mike Wilson for schools, Tim Connors for facilities, Rob Dyer for IT. Like, basically, you know, yeah, it, it won't, I struggle to think of something that the assessor is doing that really everybody else would need to know about. You know what I mean? What we did was we kind of bifurcated it and we had the senior staff and then we had like a town hall department head meeting separately. And, and where there was overlap, you know, Doug Thomas and Tony Caserta also went to the department head meeting. So we internal the town hall where there's a lot of overlap. And then, cause a lot of the senior staff, um, it's mostly people outside of town hall itself, you know? All right, well, I think starting them off with some simple tasks like you talked about is a good way to kind of dip their toe in a little bit, um, see what the reaction is to that, um, you know, how well they handle it. You know, even if it's something we can come back and go, wow, you know, you guys really nailed this. That's awesome. Yeah. Or, and some will. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And I will, I'll, I'll just make a habit of sending you guys, I think it's the same link anyway for every senior staff meeting, but I'll send out an email to try to re remind you in case you can come. And then I will try to record it as well. So you can see if, if you can't do that. That would be helpful because I, I mean, I know, I, I don't speak for everybody, but I think I kind of speak for everybody in that um, our days are full of meetings. <laughs> and if you rely on me to remember that I have a meeting, you know, I, it's right. not gonna happen. And if it's not in my calendar, it doesn't happen. You'd much rather watch a meeting while you're relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't hear my comments. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. And I'll try to, um, maybe when I'm having, checking in with them on how they did, that's a good opportunity for me to um, discuss quarterly reporting with them again. I'll, I'll dig up some of the older ones and try to pick out what seems really useful and then try to get some more information out of what could be. But just remember, Rory, your quarterly reporting, you want it to be the key performance measures for your strat plan. So ideally you're tying that together so you're not making extra work. You don't want extra things, right? So that would be good to get them kickstarted if you can rekindle some of what you did in the quarterly reportedly reporting because that might generate how they would write their strat plan, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Oh, no. I had a thought. I mean, you could take this position. You just start there. You, you've already done quarterly reporting. There was data on those reports. There had to have been tasks that had to be achieved to make those that data real. So, so you know, one thing for, uh, for my class, um, I had to do kind of a, an assessment of human resources in the town, center, right? So I went back and I looked at a lot of the documentation that Michelle, you know, years ago had created. <clears throat> and a lot of the documentation was, you know, covered all of the bases. Um, and I think it was the same with the quarterly reporting. The basic quarterly reporting form did everything you want a quarterly report to do. Uh, the issue came with implementation and, and follow-up and, and coaching. You know, we didn't coach the department head on how to do goal setting. You know, what, what type of information are we looking for? They gave us what they gave us and we said, look at this, we're doing quarterly reporting. You know? Right. I think that was the real problem. So, um, I'll take it as a starting point and just try to improve it a little bit. And I'll remind them. I mean, that's a great point, Bob. And I, I tried to reiterate that when I was talking to them. It's like, guys, you're already doing all of this. You know, we're not asking you to do anything that you're not already doing. It's formalizing and documenting. That's all we're talking mm -hmm. about. So. That's it.
Everything all right, Stefan? Yeah, my, when my wife leaves the house, everything goes to hell. So <laughs> I know that feel. I know that feeling. Yeah, <laughs> especially with the animals. All right, good. All right, so you feel like you're in a good place, Rory? At least for next steps. I've got my marching orders. All right. So let's move on to our next item. There's nothing more on this one. Um, the EDC plan. And Bob, you had some. Um, yeah, I had some thoughts or comments that I put on the plan. Uh, I don't yep. know if I'm sharing it right now. Okay. And again, I, I, I was kind of looking at it from two standpoints, not just from how the plan was written, that if you were to follow the plan, you know, what actions would come from it, you know? So, you know, I think the vision and mission is, is critical, you know, I mean, and what I, what I kind of come to find out, I guess I, I remember they really didn't touch the plan that much. So I think they left it, it the way it's been for a while. There wasn't a lot of additions. There was a few, no, nothing crazy. And um, so, I mean, I just made a couple of recommendations from a word perspective in the vision, because, you know, just to say to promote economic growth, I think you, you want to be, you know, you want to add an adjective, like whether it's sensible or sustained or, you know, something that drives it so it's repeatable. It's not just a, you know, a, it's a pretty generic statement to promote economic growth and seeing it benefits business and residents. Um, mm -hmm. the, the reason that, because I'm thinking, and I made a comment yesterday in our, um, board selectman meeting, you know, COVID's going to change even how we look at economic development. And I don't think that that has even been implemented into their plan yet. Uh, businesses aren't, you know, you're not, the big box businesses are, or big building businesses are not going to be coming to town anymore. People are going to be working from home a lot more. So we, we may want to change some of the parameters around what we want for economic development in town. Right. So anyway, so I made some recommendations on the vision and mission statement. And then really, as you scroll down, you know, they did a, a SWOT analysis that was very kind of just pretty basic. And, and, you know, when, when I look at a SWOT analysis, you know, some of the tasks that come out of it to me is how did they quantify the SWOT analysis, you know? Right. And ask some questions. How many people use the rail system in Seymour? Is it a staple strength to build upon? You put it as a strength, the rail system. Well, is it really a staple strength of Seymour to have a, a, a rail system? It may be, but you have to have data that supports that. Right. And, and, and I think they, they should be thinking about how that data is obtained. Now, they may not go and obtain the data, of course, that team, but from a plan perspective, that might be one of the items that would come out of the plan. Right. I mean, so mm -hmm. that's where I was kind of driving to in some of the questioning. Um, the downtown growth potential, you know, does the downtown growth have growth potential? What opportunities would draw additional activity? I think some of the things, what are they hearing? You know, you could hear from the residents, you might be hearing that, that what you put, what do you put downtown? You know, some of those things have to be, and then that might generate a develop a, <clears throat> um, you know, develop a document that defines the residents' feelings about the downtown area. Again, I'm just throwing out those out as ideas, but when you get those, when these questions came to my head, those are the things that you would want in the plan itself as actionable items, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you guys read through it and you don't have to agree or disagree to my, um, you know, I mean, I, I just kind of generated questions whether they're right or wrong is irrelevant. It was more of what they, you know, what they would want to probably probably think about to put tasks together against those questions, you know. I feel like they kind of so it's not really a it's not really a it's, it's not, not measurable. Right. And I feel like they went backwards. 
or at least. It, well, I, I don't think they spent much time really thinking about it the way I personally, I, I, I think they just maintain the same uh, structure there. They're not thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. I mean, did we expect them to come up with their own vision statement and mission statement? They did. They generated it. So. I, know, I know that. Did, yeah. I said, did we expect that? Um, not having an economic development committee, I mean, you know, director, then it has to come from somewhere, right? We, we, whether they, whether that is the vision and mission is, is what has to be determined. This is just the strategic plan, right? So, I, you know, I, To me, one of the, the big issues with economic development in general in the town of Seymour is the lack of a cohesive vision. Every, you know, if you guys remember um, when we did our in-person event at the Land Trust and we did that exercise where we gave everybody a dollar and they had to spend mm -hmm. according to their priorities. Economic development was, oh, like at the top of the list, right? Every, everybody said, we want economic development, we want economic development, we want it. Um, but it, it means different things to different people. I was gonna, based on what definition? I mean, that's <laughs> exactly right. Like mm -hmm. our grand list has been growing. That is economic development, but that's not what people mean, right? They want quality of life improvement. They want retail options. They want dining. Um, and so to me, the issue is the, a lack of a cohesive vision. And e even when you get down to a smaller level, like I will always remember it was like, you know, the annual Tritown Plaza Facebook post. <laughs> I was just thinking Tritown Plaza. <laughs> and, and somebody's like, we need more fine dining options, you know, like a like a Ruby Tuesday or something. Mm. And so like even dining, there, there's a lot of variability there in terms of what people are looking for and what they expect, right? But right. <clears throat> like, I'm happy that they developed a vision statement, but I would like it to be a little more specific as to the actual vision that they wanna see for the town of Seymour. Do they wanna see the town of Seymour become a retail destination? Do they want like, do they want big box? Because that I, that's all I see. We need Trader Joe's, we need, you know, this is what you're going to try town. Do they want to see a lot of restaurants like Ansonia? I hear that too. Um, and then once they identify, again, even if it's not 100% correct, but once they identify a unified vision like that, then, then it becomes a lot easier for them to kind of go through the process that we're trying to get everybody to do, which is, all right, if we want restaurants, what do we need to do? If we want retail, what do we need to do? Yeah, right. Just, just to be clear, I want to make it clear even to this team. When I looked at it, I just looked at it from a plan. I wasn't looking to create the vision or mission. Um, I was just more looking at it from a plan perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's their vision and mission, I, I didn't, I wasn't, that, it wasn't for me to question that at this point, yeah. you know, but you're right. You're a hundred, you're a thousand percent, right? I agree with you wholeheartedly. I, I'm just looking at, you know, that that's the team. If they're going to put together a, a strat plan and that's the vision and mission they want to, to adapt, then they have to do more to really drive the tasks and the actions. But yes, you're, you're, you're right. And, and maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's the discussion that has to be had that, you know, the town has to drive what their vision and mission is so they can develop a plan. You know, especially since we haven't had a director and even when we did, you know, the, the director that we had did not get along with the board. Um, and so I think, um, if everybody's working at cross purposes or thinks they're working towards the same purpose, but you know, it hasn't been communicated properly, you know, we're never going to get anywhere. 
Well, their set, their first bullet, this is why I didn't touch the vision and mission. Their first bullet was attracting new and expanding businesses and see where to diversify the tax base and alleviate strain on residential property taxes. So when you look at it that way, that vision and mission works. But you're, you're a thousand percent right. I mean, you, we need to define what you want the town to be. And, you know, maybe then it's a communications issue. And that's what EDC needs to focus on is like, look, guys, we're actually doing what you want us to do. The tax base is being diversified. You know, the industrial park is growing. Um, but that, you know, that was, you know, Bob, the discussion with the selectmen about um, what the economic development director is doing and, and their recommendation and why it was problematic was just, you know, if you can't tell me what they're going to be working towards, you certainly can't tell me what they're going to be doing. Right. Okay. All right. So then what is our action on this item? Do we give this back to them with Bob's comments? Um, do we ask them to rework it? Do we say, okay, um, go with it and we'll look for look forward to your report in 60 days or what do we do? Well, my comments, my comments won't mean anything if the intention that we go back to them to say the vision and mission needs to be rethought. And, and maybe that generates, they, they need to have a discussion at a higher level. And maybe the vision and mission has to be created by the board for them and that's what they have to follow. That's another way to achieve that. So it's not their own vision and mission, it's the Board of Selectmen developed the vision and mission of the ADC and then they can develop the task around that vision and mission. I don't know. Isn't their mission, so to speak, mapped out in the charter? No, economic, their charge? That should be the basis of it. Right. And I would start. I would start with that. What's in the charter and <clears throat> so certainly now it's in the ordinance. Or the ordinance, wherever. But, it is. Yeah, I was going to say, but the was that what was the one that had to be rewritten, Rory? Uh, EDC, definitely. Yeah. So there was a lot of things in there, Don, that are not correct. It, and and that's it. You know, even. Um, you know, the Board of Selectmen, I think, still has kind of differing visions as to what they want the EDC to do, you know, what, what the role of that is. And, and until that ordinance is written, um, that's a little difficult. But to your point, Bob, I think you're right. Maybe it's a conversation for uh, Anne-Marie to have with the chair and, and kind of say, you know, we... And I think we've tried to say it, but I'm not sure it's, it's come across that, you know, we need a little more specifics here. It's, we're not just hiring somebody so we have somebody that we can call a director. We need, you know, we need to know what they're doing. So, so I, maybe then, um, in terms of actions, Maybe. I think the I think the ordinance committee we have to come together and, and and possibly redo that first. Yeah, maybe we should rekindle that Rory, in our ordinance meeting. Yeah, it's been. Um, uh, Bob knows we said it last night, but Malia in our office is leaving. She got another job, um, and so. We're a little strapped right now for hosting all the Zoom meetings. Um, that's been kind of the bottleneck lately. Now that the Board of Finance has started up budget workshops and we can only run two meetings a night, Malia and I have been doing like a meeting every single night for you know most of the month. So um, hopefully when that dies down a little bit, we can get the ordinance committee back up and running. Um, but in the meantime, we can uh, we can set up a time for Anne Marie with the EDC chair just to kind of keep the ball rolling. Yeah. You know, when we met with them, I mean, one of their key goals was filling that <clears throat> economic development director's position. 
but that doesn't seem like that's in here at all, is it? Or did I miss it? Well, the budget, was it one in the one year? Hold on, let me see. Right, I mean, that, that was the one thing they said they, they needed it until we get that director, we're kind of not sure where we're going and we really need to get that director and, you know, but that's not, or is that not a goal? Yeah, it says it here. Everything's TBD based on. Maybe they maybe they sort of misinterpreted something we said. I think we said something about it's not like their responsibility to hire the economic development director, and I think maybe they took it out of the plan for that reason. Yeah, good. Because it was something that they don't have the control over, per se. Well, like, and I just want to say the, the formatting of this is really surprising to me. Because I thought that their format was good before, and now it's... Yeah, I, I agree. It's all mm -hmm. over the place. I can't they, went, they went backwards rather than... And I'm not sure why. I mean, I, I guess I'm a little baffled as to what we miscommunicated... You know, or if did we miss, you know, do we communicate something less than optimally yeah, that I, I, prompted I this? I didn't talk to my wife about it and I, I, I could and ask her, I, I really did not bring this up with her. How, yeah, how come you? Because I don't want it, that you don't, but work and work and, and fun don't mix. <laughs> right. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering though, they've got the core team members of the commissioner as follows, one, two, three, four. So what's your wife, number five? And she's not number the core? No, she's four. She's number four. Oh. Yeah, I saw her on there, yeah. They're in, they're in and have been in a frustrating position in that they, they want to do work. They want to get stuff done and all they have is me and my divided attention in order to get stuff done. Um, that's why they want a professional and, and they're right in that regard, you know, in order to really, I can, I can, you know, stop the bleeding, but I can't really, you know, do any work. Um, so I, I mean, of course, of course they're right to want a professional in that role. And I agree with them. It's just, in terms of what they've done to the plan, I, I don't understand. I, and I did most of the communicating with them during that meeting, and they they sort of assured me several times that they knew what to yeah. do going yeah. forward. And it seems like there was a disconnect somewhere. Yeah, they, they knew what we were talking. They, they knew what we were talking about. Yeah, oh, that's what you want? Oh, OK. And really, most of the stuff that we told them was just sort of rewording some of the ideas they already had. It wasn't. We, we didn't. Tell weren't, we weren't calling for an overhaul. We weren't. We were just saying, no. "Hey, we just want to make some of these goals more actionable and measurable." I guess. Yeah, that's that's why I'm I'm really baffled. <laughs> what are what are the, um, you know, we, we we talked about the measurability of the other one, right? Being a something we would like to have seen some improvement on what what is in this that we can say okay you know we expected something based on the other one but given what you sent us you know we like x y and z well there, i mean listen the feasibility study uh, identify available commercial spaces available buildings that should have a time in a in a you know time frame that all those are actionable items mm -hmm. develop a formal process to respond to development or uh, inquiries that can all be done that's they're all actionable items if they have staff to do is it, it put together what's that is it just the way it's put together is it just the formatting or is it, it could, yeah it's to me it is i mean if so if they dress it up it's it's an improvement on the last one or we have some concern with the content as well. Great ministry oh. planning housing and transit area available. I mean, 
on an annual basis, prepare and present board of selectmen a list of key projects and required funding. Those are all actionable. I mean, those aren't, they're not bad. It's not, it's the formatting that's kind of goofy. Yeah, so this is the, what was sent back to them last time. Well, that's directly from, I mean, that's not their formatting. That's directly from the strap plan document, isn't it? Right, but I'm, exactly. But I'm looking but at the, the comments. What we liked was the formatting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just, is that because you know it was ours or so basically all i said to them through here was was yeah. to take out the wishy-washy words the explore consider mm -hmm. meditate upon yeah and know. i i i added a few notes too that i talked about but they were all along the exact same lines they were yeah they were, my it was just all word choice well yeah so i i mean i did appreciate so each one of the items, I did appreciate that everything was more definitive in this Word document. That, so I, I didn't really question that. Deliver updated roster meeting schedule of, for, of two chiefs of two chiefs of tax. So it was something very actionable. And then the only thing is every one of those items should have had a, you know, responsible party and then a time frame when they were going to get it done. Now, what they did, they didn't do it for each item. They put it under one month goal, which was that wasn't correct. It shouldn't have been under one month goal. It should have had those actions, deliver updated roster, identify names of primary EDC contact person, you know, whatever, whatever their actions they want to do there, that that's, they would need just to put an owner to each one of those in a time period when they're going to have that particular action completed. They just did it in a word kind of format. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, since their first goal is one month out, do we give them a month and see how they do with it? <laughs> Good. Yeah, and I even said only need to list period or months to complete tasks for all items. So each one of these items should have had just the, you know, whatever period they're going to have that complete. I mean, technically, they've done most of these things. <laughs> the, the one month one. So then what happens month two? I guess that's where I'm... Well, well no, and then they kicked it out, then they went to one year, so everything... Yeah. The rest of there's, there's, I don't think there's really much wrong with what they did. No. It's just that it, it's sort of out of left field. You know? I, okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. Do we let them just go with it? I mean, what, 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 what so, bad well, could come well, out of what, it? Well, what, what needs to be done really is just that we need to have somebody translate this into our format correct. so we can measure against it. Yes. Because the way it's written right now, how are you even going to measure? Are you going to put a check mark next to it? Are you going to highlight things that got done or didn't? It, we, we have to get it into our format. Correct. Whoever who does that, I mean, I'm not going to volunteer for it necessarily, but it's, I would hope that they could do it easier than we could, but. I don't, wouldn't take, I mean, it would, wouldn't take too long, probably. It wouldn't take a half hour to put it into our format, I don't think. You know, but. I mean, actually, the, the quarterly goal there is. You know, yeah, it was planning and zoning. It's along the lines of what we were talking about, right? Identify the desirable types of development and, and where we can possibly do it. So. Can we just send this back to them and ask them to put, well, they have it. So, okay. well, they have it, who's going to do than, it. Yeah, but rather than kind of making them out in our mojo, if we can just adapt those into our, our kind of format and send it back to them. They still have to put periods. I, I think they still would have to pick on their one year goals when they're going to get it done by a month. Because right. you can't just say in the year, they're going to do it over a period of time and they should pick, pick actionable time frames to get some of the stuff over that period. Yeah, but that's more, that's more for them to discuss internally than it is for us to. No, no, no. I, yeah, it is. But if we just give them the document with those blank, that's the only thing they'll have to fill out. That's all I'm saying. You know, yeah. Then they have to put an owner who's owner who's going to do it. Who's the owner of that particular action? 
they basically have one year goals, but they're br- broken down into three subsections. It looks like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they have one month, one quarterly, and an annual. Yeah. And we only need, we only need one one out of them. So. I guess even that that one year goal. I mean that. The goal is promote the use of long-term land development strategies. And then the first one is complete a feasibility study of an EDC corp or an ED corp. Yeah, I'm not. You know that. But... You know, and then I mean, up on that quarterly, the promote desirable desirable types of development in Seymour strategy. Meet with PNZ on a quarterly basis to ensure zoning regulations impact development are updated. Uh, uh, we're gonna go to planning and zoning and say, well, what are you guys doing to your regs? Nothing. We're we're all good. Well, oh, okay. See you in next quarter. Um, you know, I, I, <clears throat> right, and, and but it's not for us to question their actions. It's us. For, it's for us to question the metrics that they are going to drive to, right? Because so, listen, if that action doesn't do them any good, they can go do an action all they want. If it doesn't drive the metric, that's on them, right? You know, yeah, I, mean, I get. I guess the concern is more like. You know, it, let's say this is another department that puts something similar forward, right? Do we say, like, why, you know, I need you to be a little more specific? You know, I. Uh, my, my, wife must have, my wife must have heard me talking, guys, and she said, she sent me a text and it said, um, uh, her suggestion to redo the whole thing was not taken. So she didn't want her name to be written on, on some of the effort here. So. <laughs> Look, I mean, it's not bad. <laughs> it's just, um, yeah, I guess like not the, um, our, our issues can only be with, not with the what, they're suggesting, but the how they're suggesting it. So, but if this is the best system that works for them, but it, it, again, it's got to drive to the <laughs> metric. So it's not for yeah. us to question the actions that they. You can, you may challenge it, but you, listen, if that's how they feel, they want to get that task done. So it's, it's up to them. So they got to drive the metric. Not us. Yeah, not sure I want to get in their weeds. They may have a reason for that, so it, you know, it, or it is it doesn't drive the metrics, and then they learn that they have to put things down that drive the metrics. You know, I mean, that's that's the way it's it's kind of built, right? Put anything, you put any action down. If it's not going to drive the metrics, it means nothing, and you'll just create an action that you got to do, and it doesn't get you what you need. <laughs> you know. What is this? Prepare and deliver to the towns an approved strategic plan, as well as a list of local, state, and regional business links, resources, studies, surveys, et cetera, that should be added to the EDC website. Is that just going to go like random links for stuff? I mean, if you go to right now and you go to the business tab, it, it needs some work. So it's just, it's just random stuff that they might find interesting. It's not there. I guess what I'm looking for is, are they, they're not talking about the resources, studies, surveys that are driving their goals, are they? I, I guess I'm being optimistic. Well, that the way I thought that was, I thought that was the, the resources, studies, and surveys that project the image of the town. Wouldn't that be correct, Rory? I think it is. So when I see of local, state, and regional business links. So maybe mm-hmm. that's like, you know, small business association, 
you know, if, if you own a business and you come to our website and you click business, like a list of resources for business owners, people who would like to start businesses, um, as well as, yeah, stuff that may attract businesses to come to SEMA. But it, it's not directly correlated to anything that's in their strategic plan, I guess, is my question. It's just a resource page. Correct, as I'm reading it. Well, right, but what, but, but, but I can't, what I think they want that, they, they, they see that as an important step for businesses to be able to access that information and we need to make that available. I, that's the way okay. I read it. I do too, but I, but then, you know, I was, I guess, maybe optimistically saying, okay, well, this study here, you know, that we have tells us that we can do whatever, one of these things. So, I, but I don't think that's what they're going for. Okay. Maybe we give it a month and, and see what happens. I mean, I. Well, I think we have to, I know we haven't responded to them and I think we need to. Um, what I would say is, I mean, I, I can do, I can do that. I can put it into the other format without the data that they need to fill out, you know, so they, they have to complete it and mm -hmm. then make comments that they should complete it. I mean, if that helps. So yeah, it's in our format. I think that sounds good because we've already, in fairness, asked a lot of them in terms of trying to get this right. Um, so we should probably try to make it easy for them to yeah. to not spend a whole lot more time on this. I, I, I do hope they start thinking a little bit grand, grander about um, kind of, you know, with, with the intention of COVID, I think they should kind of probably revisit or at least least have a couple of action items that takes that into consideration. Let me, let me say that, you know. Okay. So then at the, the action item on this will be, um, Bob's gonna put it into a format we're more familiar with and we can send it back to them and kind of say. And you want me to use the same one that's in the plan? Is that the intention? Use the same structure? I would think either that or the dashboard format, but. I think, well, it's going to need to be in the plan. Yeah. Right? So we should probably have it in the same format. Okay. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Okay. And then I'll set up a meeting with the chair just to, to talk more generally anyway. Because I think, Okay. you know, I think part of, part of the reason that they're, um, that they have been struggling as well as a disconnect between the EDC and the administration. So. Well, I don't know where, I, I can remember multiple times that for somebody from that board being asked to come and present to us and that never happened when even Kurt's time. Yeah. We had numerous times, so. Uh, you know, it's the problem with volunteer boards. You know, it's uh, tough. Okay. Well, I feel like we're moving in a direction. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll move on. Um, fire services. Um, where did we? I'm trying. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Wait, I heard that they were super excited and just chomping at the bit to, to come to one of our meetings. Hey, I sent an email. Is there any, is there any possibility that's not true, Rory? <laughs> I'm beginning to think. Wow. wow. Um, no, I, you know, look, I talked to the chairs of the chiefs and commissioners, and I said, like, okay, guys, you know, it was the end of last month. The end of the month has a lighter meeting schedule. So I said, all right, guys how about next Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, or Thursday are all available? What works for you? And I didn't hear back. So the next week I was like, you know, we really, I got to get some times. And I, I was cleaning up um, some files on, on the server and I came across 
the strategic plan that they gave us several years ago. And I was unable to find it previously. So I sent them an email. I was like, here it is, guys. Also, still still looking for some dates. So I mention it once a week, probably. So I'll, I'll keep I don't think it's I don't think the issue's on your end, Rory. Yeah. If I wasn't clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll keep trying. Well, we can keep leading him to the water, right? Can't make him drink it. Um, all right, then. Just real quick, I, I talked to, you know, some people and I just said, like, you know, one of the other problems that you guys are going to have, and it's, it's similar to what I was saying with EDC, right? There is a department, as far as I can tell, certainly no you know, unified, coherent, anything. U unified is, is the problem. Um, and so I said, like, it, you're, this is not, when I was putting together the slide deck and I was going through that, you know, workbook that I had from class and looking at the steps, the first step is like, check whether you're ready to, to do a strategic plan. And I'm not sure the fire department is there because there is no cohesion. Um, so yeah, we I, I think that there's a lot that we can, and I'm not sure, obviously I haven't taken the class you've taken, Rory, so you probably know better than I do, but I, I think there's a lot that we could do, particularly to the fire department to help get them on the right track. Like we, me, you and Bob certainly know a lot about what they need and um, the urgency that they need things and we can start there and say how often do we have to turn things over what do you need to improve and we, we know all those things from being on the board of selectmen so we could help get them going right. what i mean is you know so yes right like an equipment plan a capital plan at the very least right but the pro what i'm saying is if you ask for a capital plan you will get three different capital plans with varying priorities oh yeah and different strategies well i think we, when we get rid of the ladder truck we should replace it with two smaller ladder trucks and that way you know and then you talk to somebody else and he's got a whole different list and all right we have a chief we have a board of chiefs between those two entities they gotta they gotta get it together and prioritize well, somebody needs to be in charge of priority yeah that's why they're in those roles I always used to joke, you know, the formerly the the head of the VFW and the head of the American Legion couldn't stand each other in Seymour, right? And the chiefs and commissioners are cats and dogs. Um, great hail oh. and citizens, cats and dogs. Um, and who suffers from that? The taxpayers of Seymour. That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. So correct. I agree with you. It, it, if it comes to putting down a, a straight vote, you know, guys, put something together, put together competing things, put it to a vote, give it to us. Um, it just in terms of, you know, there's, there's no consensus. The, the best way to handle those is to have a facilitator. So if the board's not going to make those decisions and they're going to banter about, there should be a facilitator, an outside facilitator that listens to those questions and challenges the challenges them all in front of each other so that one answer comes out. Yep. That's when that's when challenging somebody is is absolutely key because the passion comes out and then the people who have the right facts and the right data show up and the ones that don't have the data sit down. I mean that's that's typically how we even get people that are against each other. It, it just becomes yeah. a, there, there's an outside third party faction that, that facilitates that and lets them, they can banter, gets control and says, hey, listen, this is what it is. This is what, this is what the, you know, this is what the out, outcome could is. We, could we maybe, and I, I don't know how receptive they'd be to this idea. Um, could we maybe pitch like a workshop with one or multiple of us amongst the board of chiefs and ask them to prepare even if we give them a month or two or however long they think they'll need to prepare and then we 
somebody from our group or all of us play that, you know, that mediator role? I think that's That's great. something I do for work, but I, it's not something that I think they would like me to do for them. So I, I will not volunteer for that necessarily, but um, I, do I don't think they that. want to see me. Either. Yeah. <laughs> But it, it's, it, it could be, listen, it could be, a, a, like I said, a facilitator could be one, two people that it, it can't be, a, you don't want a whole board, but you, you do want a couple of people so that they can listen, so that they feel that they're listened to, they can drive the, to the facts and then get the common, the common ground between the groups. And then, because once you get, less, you may say that about the capital plan, because the capital plan is what's going to drive the strap plan. Right. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, when they know what they want, then you can say, OK, now you know what you want there. Here's your <laughs> this is how you're going to get there. This is what you need to do. Uh, I'll keep pushing and I'll try to get some dates. I mean, that's the first step. Um, you can't you can't make them do something they don't want to do no. at the end of the day. And if, so if they want to do it, they'll do it. Um, you know, we could just offer that supporting hand. I, I think you're right, Bob, in terms of. They, they need a, a mediator. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I'm willing to be part of that, if, you know, so. Yeah, I don't think, I think Kathy has a great position um, as the chair of this board and as somebody who doesn't necessarily have the history with them. Um, right. That maybe mm -hmm. you or I do, Rory. Um, so. And actually that's something I'm, fairly okay at doing so oh you're you're <laughs> you would be excellent for it i'm sure you would absolutely okay so okay all right moving through um anything new we need to talk about any open any new topics for our next meeting Bueller. <laughs> I, you know, I, I assume we'll do kind of a similar format where we'll check in on these three issues and. Okay. Um, do we want to, since Rob has um, offered to be a sacrificial lamb and do we want to take him up on his offer, Mr. Dwyer and. Uh... Oh yeah. Get him started, and then we can add him to our agenda. Just sort of a, t you know, almost our our control, because you know, I think he gets it, and he, you know, will be a, a nice positive, you know, control subject to kind of measure against. I mean, it's a bit apples and oranges, but it's still fruit. So, you know, I think. Uh, yeah. Rob is always making steps ahead. So I think he would be a great thing to, to show everybody. Cause they also, he brought- He's been doing, he's been doing it on his own really anyways, right? He's, yes. sort of, he's, he, he's the only one who actually looks out ahead and, and plans things. And he has to with their technology cause he understands you have to turn it over. He and, and the HR director are not really public facing, right? They're, they're more like, internal support kind of thing. So everybody works with Rob. Everybody uses technology. Having a um, that kind of department as an example could be very valuable. And what about HR? You mentioned them. What I'm looking for is I would I would like to have some successes in our stable that we can talk about and use to compare to to groups that are struggling to sort of see, you know, what what's working for these guys that maybe we can apply to a group that's not, you know, that, that, that's working a little harder. So instead of just every month focusing on people who, on groups that maybe aren't doing so hot, I want to make sure we are, we're focusing as well on successes. Absolutely. Um, HR could be good too. I know he's a little overwhelmed at the moment. Um, I'm sure Rob is too. Who isn't overwhelmed right now? But um, 
but it can be a good grounding exercise too. I mean, it might help HR prioritize what they, their mayhem. Yeah, I, you know, he, he could do it too, you know, they really, you know, most of them, but those two would be very good. So uh, I think we could start small. Why not to mm-hmm. start with Rob and build out from there? Get a win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Start with low hanging fruit. Anytime you want to start something new, you got to start with the low hanging fruit. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll add, we'll start with Rob. And then if you want to, if, if an opportunity presents itself to kind of sort of maybe gently float the notion past HR, we can do that. But that, that's not a, a critical path. Okay. Yeah. And they'll start giving us some data as well. All right, cool. Anything else? All right, public, you guys have had some time to uh, think about it and get your your feedback together. So we're ready for you. (laughs) All right, we'll we'll look to you next month. Uh, Can I have a motion to adjourn? Also moved. All right. Bob and Stefan. Thanks, guys.